Uh, this is Sir Avil Ahmed from Avil School of Accountancy. Uh, welcome to all of you in my financial management course, which is also very famous with the name of F9. So F9, that is basically financial management. In today's video, basically what I'm going to cover, number one, I'll be just sharing the paper pattern. Second, I'll be explaining the entire syllabus. What do we have in the syllabus, in fact? Uh, and then we'll start the syllabus also. Uh, when it comes to me, I have only uh, more than 20 years experience of teaching, Alhamdulillah. And in P4 and F9, I'm the only teacher who has got world positions. In P4 as well as in F9, I have world positions, Alhamdulillah. The way back, one of my students, he took 94 marks in F9, world position holder. And the way back, one of my students, he took first world position in uh, P4, which is the advanced financial management. Okay. <clears throat> How I'm going to teach, what will be the methodology, what I'm going to cover, each and everything I'll be discussing in this video. Okay. In F9 financial management, let me first tell you the paper pattern. Paper pattern is more or less same in all part two papers you are going to have section a in section a basically will you will be having mcqs okay in mcqs in you will be having 15 multiple choice questions you will be having 15 mcqs each is going each will have two marks each two marks okay uh, when it comes to mcqs itself from which area of syllabus mcqs are going to appear in exam so for that you have to cover the entire syllabus they can come from any area so section a you will be having 15 mcqs each will have two marks it means all together you are going to have 30 marks now let's talk about section B. Uh, dear student, in section B, we have OTQs, objective test questions. Actually, uh, we'll be having three OTQs, three OTQs, each having 10 marks. Which means section B is also going to have 30 marks. In OTQs, actually what happens, you will be having one small scenario. On that one small scenario, the examiner is going to set 5 MCQs. Okay. Uh, but all the MCQs will relate to that small scenario. The scenario will not be really big. It will be very, I would say, uh, even not moderate. It will be a small scenario. Finally, section C. <coughs> section C. You will be having two questions, two questions, two long questions. Two long questions, each 20 marks, which means that uh, section in section C you will be having all together 40 marks. When it comes to the skill of Excel, uh, only for section C you need the skill of Excel. And Excel skill which you need here is it's very basic. How to multiply on Excel, how to divide, how to take the power, that's it. Which is very, very simple. Okay. So if any one of you who has never given any CV paper should not be worried about it at all. Okay. It's very simple. It will hardly take few of your hours. And after that, you will be expert of an uh, spreadsheet uh, Excel for the paper. Okay. Now, <clears throat> this is just a paper pattern. Now, let's talk about uh, for section C especially, because in section A, your examiner can ask uh, multi MCQs from any area of the business or any area of the syllabus. Okay. But section C. 
they have specifically mentioned the three areas only for section C okay in section C section C is going to examine is examinable only on following three areas number one is working capital management number one is working capital management the second area is investment appraisal third area is business finance business finance so these are the three areas of the syllabus of which are examinable in section C but you will be finding question in section A as well as B from this, these areas, okay? But when it comes to the long questions, only these are the three areas uh, which appear in long questions, okay? Now, let us discuss the entire syllabus of F9. What do we have in the syllabus? How we are going to cover the syllabus? And let me, uh, before explaining what do we have in the syllabus of F9, let me tell you one thing. Whatever topic I'm going to teach you, I'll teach from the scratch and I'm going to keep in my mind that you're not having any previous knowledge so I will not be assuming that even I will not be even assuming that you know the how how to discount I'll explain you how how do we discount as well so simply I'll be keeping in mind that you have no previous knowledge so I, I'm going to teach you from scratch second point whatever topic I'm going to teach you as soon as we will start the topic I will try my best to uh, solve kit questions with you because as soon as you will be uh, solving the kit questions you know after that you go because after you know discussing the kit questions you will become in a better position to judge what is the level of difficulty in this paper if we are not discussing the kit questions and just explaining my own examples they will not work <clears throat> one more thing if for example there is one topic which appears in all three areas let's say it can appear in section a b and c also so we have to do the mcqs first in the classes then i'll be going for otqs and then finally section c so <clears throat> when the course is going to be completed so your kit will almost be completed also and obviously during this syllabus i'm going to give you homework as well uh, which kit i'm going to pre uh, prefer you uh, what material we are go i'm going to uh, follow actually i have my own compile book i'm going to share my compile book with you when it comes to kit this is top secret i'll uh, discuss the kit once you get enrolled yourself then i'll let you know which kit we are actually following but don't you worry Whatever I'm going to teach you, I'll teach from the scratch. So let me discuss what do we have in F9 course actually. In F9, the first topic which inshallah we'll be studying that is investment appraisal. It's going to be investment appraisal. It's going to be investment appraisal okay in a investment appraisal let me tell you one thing investment appraisal is approximately i would say it is 40 percent of your course it is 40 percent of your f9 course it is approximately 
40% of your F9 course, okay? So simply It means if investment appraisal is 40% of your course, it means it's going to take uh, obviously a uh, little bit time, no doubt about it. It's a bit time consuming topic because investment appraisal is around 40% of your syllabus. What are the topics which we'll be discussing in investment appraisal? I'll explain you later on, but let me give you an idea. Actually, what are we going to discuss in investment appraisal? Number one, investment appraisal is a long-term decision Okay, in investment appraisal, basically, we will be uh, discussing all of the all techniques. On the basis of those techniques, we can decide, we can make a decision that either we should make investment in this project or not. Because while working in an organization, let's say as finance manager, if you have been given a project that you have to appraise, then you need to decide: do we need to invest or not? And after deciding you have to convince the seniors as well. Why you are saying that this project should be accepted and why you are saying this project should be rejected. So all these, all those investment appraisal techniques which are necessary to decide uh, should company make investment in this project or not, we, we, we are going to cover in this topic. Another thing, uh, most of the students, they normally ask the question that what will be the proportion of calculation in the syllabus and what is the proportion of theory? Let me tell you, to be very honest, when it comes to exams, you should be expecting at least 40% of the paper theoretical. Uh, but when I say financial management theory, it is not the theory which you can uh, just memorize without understanding and then go on exam day and just, you know, find the answers what you have memorized according to that. No, you won't be finding such theory in F9. Basically, the entire theory in F9 is conceptual based and normally questions, they appear in theoretical uh, way, they're normally very, very conceptual. So if you're clear in your concepts, then theoretical area of F9 will not disturb you at all. And if you're not clear in your concept, theoretical area of F9 will only disturb you, okay? So twice is yours, make yourself clear with all the concepts. So uh, theoretical area which appears in exams should not disturb you at all. Okay, <clears throat> the first topic we'll be discussing is going to be inshallah investment appraisal in which you will be studying all the techniques which are necessary in order to decide the project. In order to make a decision should we invest in a project or should we reject and it is a long term decision also. What are the subtopics in investment appraisal? I'll be explaining that also later on, not now. After completion of investment appraisal, okay. The second uh, point, after completion of investment appraisal, the second topic which we are going to study in F9, that's going to be cost of capital. That will be cost of capital. And it is approximately 10% of your syllabus. The question is, what is cost of capital? For example, let's say, your organization has decided to make the investment in a project. Let's say in project A, you want to make investment. The question is, even though you have decided to make the investment because the project is very attractive, the project is having a forecast positive NPV. But the question is, even though you have decided, but now you need finance also. If you don't have funds, you won't be able to make investment. And from the source from where you are going to raise the finance, you will not get the finance free of cost. Each source of finance will have its cost. So actually in cost of capital, we are going to find out first, what is the cost of raising the finance? What is the cost of different sources of finance? Like if I raise the finance in the form of shares, what cost I have to bear? If I raise the finance in the form of debt, what cost company is going to bear and if my company is going to raise finance in the form of preference shares, what cost I am going to bear. And after having the knowledge, understanding of computing cost of raising the cost 
of raising the finance in the form of shares, in the form of preference shares, in the form of debt, then we are going to calculate cost of capital, which is also called weighted average cost of capital. Basically, cost of capital will let you know what is actually cost of financing for this project. Because if you don't have the cost of capital, you won't be able to decide properly. You won't be able to make a proper decision. Should you make investment or not? For example, your project is giving you a return of 4%, but your cost is of capital is 10%. Then obviously you are not going to make investment. It is a loss making project for you. Why? Because project is generating only 4% return and your cost is 10%. So obviously you will not make investment. So I need to know. What is my cost of capital in order to make a proper sound decision? So after studying cost of capital, we'll be studying another topic, which is sources of finance. Sources of finance. Actually, in sources of finance, we'll be studying uh, that <clears throat> what are the different sources of finance from where organization can raise the finance. Not only this, in sources of finance, we'll be studying also sources of finance, including Islamic, including Islamic sources of finance. So sources of finance, including Islamic sources of finance. And this topic is all approximately 10% of your syllabus. It is also 10% of your syllabus almost. Okay. Actually, in sources of finance topic, we'll be studying from where we can raise the finance. In addition to that, we'll be studying different uh, ratios. We'll be studying... Uh, Calculation relating to right issue and other so many other things. After sources of finance, we will be studying the topic business valuation. Business valuation. And business valuation, you can say it is also approximately 10% of your syllabus, not exactly approximately 10% of your syllabus. In business valuation, basically, we'll be studying that uh, why do we need to val why do we have to value a business and what is the reasoning of valuing the business and what are the different methods of valuing the business which are in our F9 syllabus. After business valuation, actually, we go for forex. Sometimes we go for forex. Another video also, we go for forex. That is foreign exchange, that is also approximately 10% of your syllabus. Dear student in Forex, will be studying hedging techniques. All of the hedging techniques are not uh, numerically examinable in F9. Only there are four techniques which are numerically examinable in F9. Rest of the techniques, hedging techniques, they are, they are examinable in F9, but not numerically, they are examinable theoretically. So Forex is a very easy area of your F9 syllabus and very interesting also. And let me tell you one thing. In Forex, one OTQ is must. One objective test question which has 10 marks appears in Forex normally. But rarely it happens, rarely. Then you may see two OTQs question on Forex. Very rarely it happens, but normally one OTQ you will find on Forex. Okay. But you should be mentally prepared if two OTQs comes. Rarely it happens, but uh, I think one of the attempts it happened. So you should not be worried about that. If there is only a one OTQ on Forex, it's okay. If there is going to be two OTQs on Forex, it's still okay. After Forex, we'll be discussing, inshallah, dividend policy. We'll be discussing dividend policy. Uh, dividend policy, I would say, just approximately 2% of your syllabus. Not exactly, approximately 2% of your syllabus. And then, after, 
I would say after dividend policy, we'll we are going to study working capital management. We'll be studying working capital management, which is also, dear student, very very easy and very interesting. And then we have ETC, etc., etc. Topics. So normally this is and working capital management, I would say it is approximately 15% of your, your syllabus. Approximately 15%. So this is the uh, entire syllabus of F9 and how we are going to study. I have explained you the sequence. I have given you the sequence of our topics which we will be studying. So let us go for investment appraisal. Wait for a minute. Dear student, the first topic which we are going to start is investment appraisal. Let us start investment. Investment appraisal. So let's see. Uh, let's start investment appraisal. Okay. Mm. The first topic is investment appraisal. Now, in investment appraisal, what are the topics which we are going to study, inshallah? The number one. Number one topic, I'm just giving you the breakdown of investment appraisal, appraisal. Number one topic is we are going to start NPV. Net present value. After that, we'll be discussing IRR. Internal rate of return. After that, we'll be discussing payback period. Actually, in payback period, we'll be, we are having two payback periods. One is simple, another is discounted. So, payback both. Discounted that is discounted and simple. Both pay payback period will be discussing, and after this, we'll be having ARR accounting rate of return that is. Accounting rate of return. And sometimes in F9, your examiner, instead of using the term ARR, he uses the term ROC, return on capital employed. So they, we should not be worried about that. If he is using the word ARR, we are okay with that. If examiner is using the term ROC, return on capital employed, we are also okay with that. It only happens in F9 that instead of saying Calculate ARR. Sometimes your examiner says calculate ROC, but you will be having the same uh, calculation. Each and everything will be same. So in investment appraisal, basically we have four uh, investment appraisal methods techniques. They are actually used to decide should we make investment or should we reject the project. NPV net present value. IRR is internal rate of return. We have payback period. PBP means pay back period. And we'll be inshallah discussing both the payback simple and discounted. Then we have ARR that is accounting rate of return. After this, the topic number five is sensitivity analysis. So, dear student, the next topic is going to be sensitivity analysis. Actually, in sensitivity analysis, we will be discussing, uh, like, for example, if you want to make your organization wants to make an investment in a project and N pos N NPV of that project is positive. Uh, what is that uh, NPV we will be discussing? Don't worry. NPV positive means we should be accepting this project and we should make investment. But actually, before making investment, we always advise you should perform sensitivity analysis. Actually, in sensitivity analysis, we uh, we, we study that how much adverse change in variable actually makes NPV zero. So what is sensitivity analysis? It's very, very simple. When the time comes, we'll study. Uh, but <clears throat> sensitivity analysis just gives you the information. 
how much adverse change in variable makes NPV uh, zero. So we'll uh, we'll study that. Don't worry. Let me just write other topics same. There's going to be lease or buy decision. This is another topic. Then we'll be having capital rush thing. In capital rush thing, basically we are going to study when there's a shortage of cash within the company. Then how do we use that cash? And logically in F9, basically we have only single period capital rush thing. We don't have multi period. So what do you mean by single period? What do you mean by multi period? We will study these things when uh, once we reach on capital rush thing topic, inshallah. Then we have another topic asset replacement decision. So another uh, topic which inshallah we are going to discuss in uh, investment appraisal is going to be asset replacement decision. Should we make, should we replace the asset or not? How do we decide? We'll study that. So dear student, these are the few topics which you are going to study in F9 in investment appraisal. Okay. So let us start from the first topic. Let us start from the first topic, and after that. Uh, Obviously, we'll, we'll see what happens. Let us right now start. Okay, dear students, the first topic which we are starting is that is NPV, net present value. The first topic of investment appraisal is NPV, which is very, very important, which normally appears in exam for 20 marks. NPV, net present value. Now, do you should listen and listen carefully. Now, you need to understand few basic things. Number one, in financial management, in financial management, whenever you make investment, it could be any day, it could be any date. Uh, but the point of investment is called year zero. In investment of Brazil, in time. Of investment it's called year zero or you can say T zero so investment appraisal time of investment is called actually year zero so whenever you are making an investment that is going to be your year zero now normally what happens when you make an investment in any project obviously first there will be an outflow of initial investment and then you are going to have, let's say, some of the sales in the future. But obviously, when I'm going to generate sales, then I'm going to incur variable costs as well. Another possibility of fixed costs, it is also possible that I may have to incur the fixed costs as well. So simply what I want to say, when you make an investment in a project, so there is going to be outflow as well as inflows. For example, let's take an example of this question. We need to calculate NPV. I have written T0, T1, T2, T3. Let's say this project is having only three years life. Let me make the initial investment. Assuming initial investment is 20,000. In year one, he's going to have 5,000. In year two, he's going to have 6,000. Uh, in year three, In year three, uh, net cash flows will be two lakh uh, fifty thousand. So in year one, it is uh, T zero, it is twenty thousand. Then we have five thousand. Then we have six, and then in T three, assuming we have two lakh fifty thousand. Okay. Which T three is the last day of the project. Now, I cannot simply uh, add or deduct five thousand plus six thousand plus two fifty from twenty thousand because there is a difference between timings. Okay, 20,000 is a two days value and whatever is a, is a two days value, it is itself in a present value. But T1, 5,000 is a future value, T2, 6,000 is a future value, T3, 2, like 50 is a future value. So what we have to do? We cannot simply add 5, 6 and 2, 50 and then net off from 20,000 and we are, we, we are going to say that uh, net there is capital, net uh, there is inflow. So we should make investment in this project. 
uh, we cannot let off directly because <clears throat> this 5000, 6000 and 250, all of these three are future cash flows. They are future values. So we have to discount them to bring them on T0. On T0, we already have an outflow of 20,000, which is itself a present value. But the 50,000, which is going to appear in T1, and 6,000, which is going to appear in T2, and 2,50,000, like which you are going to have in T3, they all are future values, and we have to discount them. Directly, we cannot simply net off. So, assuming the discount factor is 10%, cost of capital is 10%. The objective of discounting is to bring, to convert future value into present value. Objective of discounting over here is to bring future value into present value. Number one, in T0, the discount factor is always one. In T1, it's going to be 0 0.909, it's going to be 0 0.826, and we have 0.751. That's great. Let's simply calculate present value of net cash flows. Present value of net cash flows. If I multiply 1 with 20,000, it is going to be 20,000, of course, negative. If we multiply 20 with 1, we'll get uh, 20,000. If we multiply uh, 0 0.90 with 5,000, let's see what we are getting. What we are going to get. Let me take the calculator. 5,000 into 0.909, it is 4545, 6,000 into 0.826, it gives me 4956, uh, 2,50,000, let's make it 25. So let's make it 25,000. So 25,000 into 0.7751, it is 18,775. Now we have converted all future values to present value. Now, of course, we, we are going to add T1, T2, T3 present values, and then we will be subtracting 20,000. If the final answer is positive, then organization should make investment because it is a beneficial project. If final answer is negative, then organization should not make investment because it is a loss-making project. So let us calculate NPV, net present value. We have to add these three values and deduct 20,000. So dear student, the final answer is positive 8,276. Let me check once again. 18,775 plus 4,956 plus 4,545. That's great. Okay, now DSN try to understand one thing. The, the forecast NPV of this project is positive, 8,276, which means that organizations should accept this project. Because financially it is a beneficial project. Why? Because positive NPV means after recovering each and every cost relating to this project, organization will get the benefit of 8,276. Obviously, when there is a net benefit for the organization, then organization should make investment. Right now, I have not explained to anyone what are the basic principles of calculating NPV. We will be discussing uh, these things in the next class, inshallah. That what are the basic principles of calculating NPV? And what are the different, what are the three possible interpretations in NPV? What did I say? What are the three possible interpretations in NPV? We'll see that also, inshallah, later on. Let me give you a very simple example and you have to solve it. Uh, let's say initial investment. Is 1 lakh. Initial investment in the project is 1 lakh. Project life is 4 years. So project life is four years. Okay. Time T1, T2, T3. 
so time is t1 t2 t3 t4 t, uh, t3 t4 okay sales okay assuming is going to be 80 90 80 and let's say 120 we have variable cost let's say 10 percent of sales assuming 10 percent of sales uh, is just a question 10 percent of sales is variable cost or variable cost is equal to 10 percent of sales you can do this variable cost is equal to 10 percent of sales so if i take 10 percent of sales so it's going to be 8000 negative 9000 negative so this is going to be a variable cost okay let me leave this this you have to decide okay this is the variable cost fixed cost it's going to be 5,000 5,000 6,000 and let's say 6,000 cost of capital is 10 percent required calculate NPV uh, you just need to calculate NPV so this is simply uh, data of the question and you have been asked to calculate what you have been asked to calculate NPV okay let's see uh, we are going to solve this question on Excel so that from a very first video we should go to the Excel let's try to do this on it okay dear student that's question one we need to calculate NPV okay now let me tell you one thing in financial management whenever you make investment that time period is called time zero year zero repeat in financial management whenever you make investment that time period is called time zero so point of investment time of investment is called year zero so let us first write the timeline time zero means point of investment the project is having a life of three years okay this project is having a life of three years initial investment is 100,000 initial investment initial investment is 100,000 you have to write negative one lakh because when you are making an investment of course it's going to be your outflow So when you are going to make an investment, it is going to be obviously your outflow. Now we have sales. In year one in the question, it can be seen, dear student, the sale is 80,000. In year two, the amount of the sale is 90,000. In year three, the amount of the sale is again 80,000. And uh, the life of the project is not three years, it is four years, no issue at all. And this is 80. And life of the project is actually four years. Sale in the year number four is one like 20,000. Variable cost is 10% of the sales. Less variable cost which is 10% of 
sales okay so i have to take 80000 then into 10% but since i need to deduct variable cost so let me put a negative sign here so all you need is is drag it so you will have your answers so we have deducted the very we have calculated the variable cost obviously variable cost is going to be my outflow and now let's deduct the fixed cost this is 5000 i have in the second year also 5000 in the third year i have 6000 and 6000 and let me tell you again the data is over here initial investment is there project life is there we have sales variable cost fixed cost cost of capital is 10 percent you need to calculate npv and let me tell you one thing again right now i have not discussed what are the basic principles of calculating npv we'll be discussing the basic principle of npv as well uh, later on in the next video not now inshallah i'll be disclosing the name of the kit which we are going to follow uh, inshallah and i have mentioned whatever i'm going to teach you I'm to going to cover all three areas from the kit that is MCQs, OTQs, and the long question as well. And someone is having Alhamdulillah teaching experience of more than 20 years means, uh, Inshallah you will be in safe hands. And someone who is having world position in F9 as well as in P4, and I got uh, more than um, more than I would say six time positions in P6, which is advanced taxation. In almost in every paper, whatever I teach, uh, I have I've taken position in. Each and every paper, Alhamdulillah. One of my students he took 85 marks in F5 also. So it's a long history of positions. So once you enroll yourself in my uh, course, so to be very honest, you will be in safe hands, inshallah. So let's go for net cash flows. Net. Here we can use a sum formula. You just need to write the sum, shift and then bracket. Sh press the shift and upward arrow keys. So now you just need to drag it, so you will get the net cash flows. Okay. Now how do let's calculate uh, discount factor also. Cost of capital is ten percent. How do we calculate discount factor? Let me tell you. Actually, you can uh, number one, you will be having discount factor table as well. Otherwise, you can calculate by yourself as well. How to calculate discount factor? Discount factor is calculated like this: one upon one plus i the power is n. Let's say i is ten percent, so it's going to be one point one. For the first year, your answer is going to be point nine zero nine. For second year, your answer is going to be 0.826. For the third year, your answer is going to be 0.751. Or you can do it. For the fourth year, it's going to be 0.683. Fifth year is going to be 0 0.621, 0 0.567, and I don't know so on. For the sixth year, actually, it's going to be 0.564. Okay, it will be 0.564 for the sixth year. There's no need to remember all these discount factors. You'll be having a discount factor table. Otherwise, uh, by using this formula on Excel spreadsheet, you can calculate these uh, figures very easily. Like I had first is equal to then one upon one point one shift into power, which is then I'm selecting zero. Any variable uh, which has power zero, it is equal to one. Just you need to drag it. Drag this. Now you're having discount factor of all the years. If you want to do the rounding off, you can do that also. 
okay let's say for three decimal places good enough now I need to calculate present value of net cash flows how to calculate present value of net cash flows take this into multiply this now all you need is just drag it now we have the present values as well now all the future values by discounting we have converted with them into present values now we can net off them if your final answer is positive then you should make investment because the project is financially beneficial for you if the last an last answer is going to be negative then obviously we are not going to make investment so let's calculate NPV by using the sum formula sum formula I'm using only those options which are uh, given in your actual exams and let me tell you one more thing later on uh, we'll be doing number of questions from CD platform as well which we're going to uh, face in exams actually Wow the NPV of this project is very very healthy I would say it is positive so positive NPV means it is a beneficial project because after re recovering all each and every cost this project gives you the benefit of 1,42,973 we should be making investment dear student in this class I did not discuss what are the basic principles of calculating NPV we will be discussing the basic, the basic principles of calculating NPV in the next uh, class inshallah and we will be doing some of the kit questions inshallah from a very second class also and let me tell you one more thing again uh, wherever you get a stock in my course whatsapp support will be available till the last day of exam okay you'll be getting answers of all of your queries on whatsapp even uh, if you feel like to call me you can call on the whatsapp as well so finally uh, best of luck enroll yourself in f9 financial management as soon as possible uh, you will not regret it after joining my course let me tell you because after joining my course you will come to know that your teacher is a really responsible person to be very honest you will be in safe hands otherwise twice is yours so have a nice day and i would say have a nice life in fact thanks a lot watching my video and listening to me with patience thanks a lot